Hello YouTube and welcome to the Turbo Series. Today we're going to be doing a lot of Awakens. We're expecting to do 100 plus Awakens to fully maximize this week's event. Now normally when a gala like this pops up, I'm not so sure about going all the way to 600 because all it's getting you is Destiny stuff and it's a heck of an overinvestment to go to 600 points. But because we have a Starlight Melody, Theoretically, it is possible for me to get to 1,000 points here, times it by six if I spend about 200 bucks, and then that will get me a lot of rewards, 6,000 points in total, which will give me this six times. That can be six Core of Origin shards, six Sublimation chests, any combination of what I want. Destiny stuff if I really feel like I need it, but mainly right now I need more Transcendence Heroes with subs and cores so I can destiny them in the first place. So our main priority here is probably going to be getting the core of origin chests so we can get as many cores and sublimations on our heroes as possible. But to do that, we need to awaken heroes to get five points each time, and that's going to be the bread and butter way that we're getting points in this. On top of that, we have wishing coins and mithril pickaxes, but today the priority is awakens. After that, we also have the Tower of Oblivion to go and do Depth 17 in here, which will be very good fun. We've got Elena, Swordflash, Andrea, and Annabelle as up heroes, so we'll give that a spin later today. And also, guys, I thought you might want to see how Patricia is doing in the Star Expedition. Today is the last day of Star Expo, and we're still in the X1, so we're X111 right now. So I wanted to show you how Patricia is managing, even though we don't have a Freya or a Halora. But we're going to start things off with Awakens today, but stay tuned for those two things as well. So we're going to kick things in the Soul Temple. We've got some heroes to awaken. We've also got some stones to pop as well. And I thought we'd kick things off with what I think is the highest value hero in the auction house right now, because A tiers sell for a good price, and there is a shortage of good A tiers. So we're going to kick things off with Alamac. So let's drop it in. We've got a C minus stone here. Let's see what we can get. Will we get an A tier? Okay, that's pretty good. That's just a C minus. Okay, I say pretty good. That's exactly what we were expecting to get from that. But you never know, we might still high roll. Let's see, we've got a C stone here. Let's drop it in. Let's confirm. Will we get something good? It's 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 purple. Yep, is that is this just a normal C? Yep, yep. Yeah, nothing special yet. Uh well. Seems like we're just getting basic boring things. The odds of getting an A. It's, ooh, it's, it's, I mean, it's 0.01%. It ain't gonna happen, guys. There's no chance we get an A tier from this. See, it's purple. Not even a bit of blue. It is just C plus as it comes. Next up, we'll just use the rest of our Alamax as standard awakens, and let's see what we can get. Starting off with blue, as always, that's gonna be an E plus, the most common awaken you can possibly get. Let's see if from these next ones we get something nice, though. I really hope so. Nope, we're just getting blues. Very standard E plus once again. Next pull. What are we getting from here? Let's see. Oh, we got a bit of yellow. And it's pulled up. Is that a... It is a C minus. That's not bad. That's points. And points are good. I'll take that. What else are we getting? Oh, it's blue. That is completely blue. For an E minus. Yuck. The worst awaken you can possibly get. And here we go with our final Alamac copy. Hey, it's purple. Good start. And then what is it going to get me overall? Just a standard C. That is still not bad. Okay, guys, let's drop it in then with Natalia copies now. Do we get anything good from these? We're starting off with a bit of blue. That's rubbish. That's an E+. Here we go. We've got one left for Natalia. Is this one going to be good? Or is that going to be just as bad? It's blue. And it's an E+. Oh, well, that sucks. Next up, we're going to move on to Mockman. Get some of this guy on. Here we go. Can we get anything good for him? Starting off with blue. That's not too great. That's just an E minus again. Yucky. Here we go. Next open. We're going to get something good from this. That's yellow. And that's a D minus. Still pretty good. Better than getting an E. Next open. From this, we've got some blue. And there's a bit of yellow, and it's a D plus overall. That is pretty good. The next batch, what are we going to get from here? Blue again. E plus. Okay, next Mockman. Some more blue coming through here. Not happy about that, but it's still an E plus. I would have rathered a D minus there with that bit of yellow. But we got to take those. That's going to be an E plus. Here we get, okay, a bit of yellow coming through. And that's a D minus. Still, okay, that's not bad. I've seen before where we've had two yellows and it's still been an E+. 
So I'll take D minus. What do we get here? It's an E plus. Even with a bit of yellow, that's not good. Next on the batches, what are we going to get? There's yellow. Oh, please. D minus still. Okay, not ideal, but I'll take it. Next Mockman. Here we go. E plus. And from this Mockman, what are we going to get? That's E plus as well. Okay, starting off with blue. That's still not good. E minus. Ugh. Hideous. As if. Right, come on, Mockman. Do be proud. Give me something good. It's blue again. For a total of just an E. Goodness gracious, guys. We haven't even had any green. There's a random bit of purple getting us a D minus. That is unreal. What the heck? We got an E plus. Give me something good, bro. Oh, hello. We got a bit of purple. What's it going to be? That's a C. I'll take that. I'll take that. That's rewards for us in the soul gathering statue. We'll destroy that. Get some soul points. And this one's okay. Yellow. Hey, there's purple again for it. Oh, if that was a C minus, that would have been great. But no, it was a D plus. Heartbreaking. Here we go. Next one. It's C again. Oh, it's a C minus this time. Let's go. And the final mock man. Are you going to get me three C's back to back? Come on. You know you want to. Nope. It's going to be blue. But at least... Oh, I was going to say a D minus, but it's not. Look at that. That's what I was saying about before. Two yellows. And it's still an E plus. Disgusting. Right, next up, we're going to do Halora's. We have a lot of queen copies. And the reason I'm doing Halora is because B tier Halora's actually sell for a pretty decent price on the auction house. So I was thinking, my logic here was, well, I've got a lot of these chests, and the best heroes you go for are either Halora or Aspen. And Aspens are only really decent if they're A-, minus. but even then, the market is so saturated with A- minus Aspens that I decided, you know what, I'm going to go after Queen, because if we get some good B-plus Queens, they're actually worth something. So that was my thinking. Also, generally speaking, we're not going to get anything good. As you can see, we've had nothing better than a D- in these last few queens. So it doesn't really matter who you go for. You're just coping if you hope you get an A tier. But either way, we've got some decent copies coming through here. That's a D right there. That's not terrible. So we'll just keep the copies coming. Get ourselves some more queens on here. And if we're lucky, we might super high roll. Maybe I'll get an S tier. Who knows? Anything can happen. Either way, that's a D- here on queen. And next up, we're going to try again. We got plenty more awakens to do. Let's see if we get lucky. That's just an E. And from this one, it's blue again. That's an E minus. Horrendously bad. Okay, next queen, what are you gonna do for me? Oh, super blue for just an E. What are these rolls, guys? I'm getting super duper unlucky. Blue again? Oh yeah, E minus. Yucky. Okay, queen, come on, do me proud. Give me a good one, give me a good one. Oh, hello, and there's a bit of purple. It's completely purple. That's a C minus. We take those guys. That is a win. Cs are great. It's a lot of points. It's an A plus. I'll take that. It's not the worst. It's certainly not the best, though. Next copy is still blue. E plus again. Nope, that is just an E. What? Come on, queen. Stop letting me down. It's yellow. Bit of purple. That's a D. Pretty good. Next queen, what are you going to get me? D minus. That's what I like to see. Even one bit of yellow getting me a D minus. That is a win. That is a huge win. From this, what do we get? Okay, it's yellow. Completely yellow. Oh, apart from that bit of blue, at least it didn't pull it down. That is a D minus. Very good. Okay, next open. What are we getting here? Why don't we get me a C? Oh, we are. There's some purple. Uh-oh. It's still a C minus. I was worried. Even that bit of yellow can be enough sometimes to pull you down to a D plus. But I'm still happy with that C minus. From this one, what are we getting? It's a bit of yellow there starting us off. Oh, blues to pull it down, but it's still a D minus. Let's go. That is a win in my eyes. Oh, it's blue again. Bit of yellow. Still a D minus. Again, that's good. When there's one yellow and it's still a D minus, I'll take that as a win. That's like getting red, green, green, and it's still being an A minus. From this, we get an E. Not ideal, but sometimes you've got a low roll. Blues again for an E. Yuck. Oh, hello. There's a bit of purple. It's a purple with a bit of yellow. It's a C minus. We take those guys. That is points in the Soul Gathering statue. Next up, not amazing, but still, that's an E. Come on, do be better than an E. That was really bad. From this one, though, we do get a bit of yellow. Yellow, yellow. Ooh. 
D plus. That's good points. That's good points. We take those. That is excellent. It's yellow again. Two bits of blue for an E plus. All right, next open. We got plenty of queen copies left. That's going to be yellow again with a bit of blue, but it's still a D. Nice. A D as well. Not a D minus. A D. Blue. Don't like it. E minus. Oh, you hate it. You hate it so much. Horrendous. This opening. It's blue again. Blue with a bit of yellow. E plus. Not ideal, but at least it's better than an E minus. That's going to be E plus. Nice. This next one. Blue again. Bit of yellow. E plus again. Come on. Come on. Give me something good. Oh, it's so blue. Oh, it's just an E. Oh, it's horrendous chat. This is terrible. We got 10 left before I'm going to check in on our Awakens. See how many more we need to do after this. We're getting so much blue, it's unbelievable. You're going to let me down again? Hey, that's that could be good. It's a rainbow. It's a, all over the place and it's a D. I don't know if that's good or bad. I'll, I'll take that as a win, I think. I think D is better than an E, so... Ow, my knee. Ow. That hurt. Oh, I'm kicking good luck into the game. Fantastic. Maybe I need to whack my knee on my desk all the time. Either way, that's a C. Fantastic. Ouch. Right, we've got seven left. Here we go. Give me something good. Oh, it's yellow. Yeah. C minus. Hello. That's actually fantastic. Two yellows and a purple. Gets me a C minus. More like that, please. Come on. Six left. Here we are. Off we go. Oh, it's yellow again. Uh, guys, kick your computer. It'll get you better. Look. Look at that. D plus. Fantastic. Right. Here we go. Five of them left. Bring on the A tier. Let's go. Oh, my word. It's purple again. Yes. For a D plus in total. I don't mind if I do. We've still got four more to do. What do we get? It's, oh, it's purple again! Wow! C minus! Fantastic! And we get two more. Here we go, boys. Oh, it's blue. The luck streak is over. We've been let down. That's an E minus. Horrendous, horrendous bad luck. And the final one for our queens. Here we go. What are you going to be? Oh, well, there you go. It's blue with a bit of yellow. That's an E+. Plus. And we might as well throw a final copy. Do we have a Vulcan lying around? Just a single Vulcan copy? Nope. What about a single Aspen? Oh, we got two Aspens here. Go on, then. We'll do them. Let's see. What do we get from this? It's just an E+. Plus. What we'll do is we'll destroy by smart disassembling like this. Get rid of all these. And that's going to allow us to do that final Aspen copy, which is sat in the bag. And maybe that's going to be good. So here we go, the final Awaken, before we check the points. Nope, that's just blue. And that's going to be an E+. Big sad. Right, let's go claim our rewards in like that. And let's see where we're at in the Soul Awakening offers. We've got 415 points. All right, let's start selecting our rewards. So we want an artifact chest. We're going to want ourselves Essence Sublimation. We're going to want from here, probably a Core of Origin. And this one here we haven't got yet, but we're probably going to want Divine Power Aurora Gems. So let's claim all that stuff through, and let's get our rewards. Nice. Now, seeing as we're getting ourselves some more hero copies to awaken, I noticed I have these Mysterious Artifact Fortune Chests. So we're going to open both of these. Now, last time I pulled these, I was getting Golden Crowns. Let's see what I get from these. Oh, you know what? A Ruyi Scepter and a Magic Stone Sword isn't bad. Ruyi Scepter, actually Pog, need some of these. Magic Stone Sword, kind of cool. I will take those artifacts gladly. So let's pull open our 21 Queen copies, and let's go to the Soul Temple, and let's destroy all of these E's and D's. All right, with that, we've got ourselves 1,395 contract story gems, which is going to be 13 Queen copies we can bust open. So let's go ahead and put our 13 Awakens down, see what we get from this. We're dropping in with, whoa, yes, immediately getting ourselves a C tier. That is fantastic. Next batch, here we go. More like that, please. And that's trash. We get an E tier. Horrendously bad. Next one, here we go. It's, oh, it's bad again. Oh, yuck. E, why? Why are we getting terrible copies? Come on, I want to get Cs at least. Blue, again. 
Really? For another E? What is this? Next one. Come on, eight more queens until we have to retire again. What are you going to do for me? It's still blue up, oh, bit of yellow. That's a D minus. I take those. If that had come out as an E plus, I'd have been so upset. Right, this one. What are you going to do? It's still bad. That's another E. You'd hate to see it. Let me pull from this. It's blue. Bit of yellow. D minus. Not terrible. Okay, five more. Come on, guys. Let's get a high roll. It's E. Ah, oh, completely E. That is a letdown. Four remaining. Here we go. Hey, it's purple. Oh, bit of yellow. But still a C minus. Great to see. Three more queen copies, and then we need to retire. What are we getting from this? It's yellow. Oh, rainbow for a D overall. And then last but not least, guys, two more to go. Here we go. From this one, it's going to be blue. That's an E+. Plus. And this final one, it's blue again. Completely blue, in fact, for an E. Okay, let's go to our smart retirement. Let's get these E tiers out of here. And we'll do the Ds as well. Oh, bit of a C- minus coming in there, trying to infiltrate the position. We retire. And that's going to get us another three awakens we can do on queens. So let's go bring these in. From this, we get ourselves more blue. For a total of just an E, we're getting a lot of E's. This is unfortunate. And the next two, bit of yellow. And that's going to be a D minus. And the final one, it's, it's green! It's green! Oh! For a B minus! Let's go! And that's decent. It's got a B in attack and a B in speed. Let's do it. That is, that is making me happy. Great to see. All right, let's claim all those chests. And now we need to get ourselves a six star in the life faction and in the dark faction. Because there's a little something we need to do. So let's pull these four dark spirits out. Let's go to the life faction. And let's get ourselves six divine spirits. And we're going to go into the fortune ruins creation circle. And we'll make ourselves a dark six star hero. Now we'll do light first actually, which is just, we'll pop out this guy. And for dark, we need two copies of someone we want to make to six star. I got these here. So let's just pull two of these, see if they're two of the same. Uh, it's a Sleepless and a Daz Moog. Okay, so if we get one... Unless, do we now have two of each? No, so we need either one more Sleepless or one more Daz Moog. That's a Dark Arthendol. So any additional one of them will do. There you go, two Dark Arthendols, perfect. So we go to the Creation Circle. We'll make a six-star Dark Arthendol. And let's go into the Soul Contract. Because we'll get ourselves 300 more Contract Story Gems. So we exchange this. And we exchange that. And there you go. That's three more Awakens we can do in the Soul Temple. So we start off, that's going to be blue for a grand total of E+. As far as blues go, that's not the worst. Next one, what do we get? It's green! Oh my word! Oh! Oh! Wow! It's a B+. Plus! There's a bit of red! Oh my goodness gracious, that is a fast queen. She's a very fast queen. It's a bit, bit bad, but it's still kind of good. That might sell, you know, because 58 speed. This is a cheap, fast queen. Someone out there wants that. That is a cheap, fast queen. Okay. And the next one, what do we get here? Let's pop her out. Is this going to be as good? No, it isn't. It's going to be yellow for a D. You know what, guys? I think we should go check our points. So looking here, we've got 536 points. That's not the worst. Just a few more Awakens left to do. Okay, so we don't actually have that many heroes left to retire. That's going to be another 160 points. I should probably destroy some of our B-minuses. I think it might be worth getting rid of B-minuses just simply because... They don't give as much as you'd like to when it comes to value in the soul contract compared to C's. And they do destroy for like 300 contract story gems, which is still pretty substantial. So I think what we'll do, we'll throw these guys in the bin and see what that gets us. So we hit the retire button. 
That's another 1,300. That's probably all we need to finish this off. So let's do it. We go back to our queens. I've only got two left, so we are going to have to get some more from chests. That's fine. But we're dropping down bit of yellow. And that's going to be a total of D minus. Okay, and the final queen copy. What are you doing for me? Going to be just as good? Oh, it's green again! Hello, baby! With a B plus in attack. Bro, these queens are goated. Actually the best. A B tier queen. I couldn't ask for anything better. All right, let's go to these chests. We got six of these. What's going to be six queen copies we pop out here? Pull those out. And we also have a Mockman to pull out. So let's open this Mockman, see what he's going to be for us. Just a bit of blue. Nothing amazing. That is an E minus. Let's go check for the queens again. Or maybe even an Alamac or two. We haven't got any Alamacs. Nope. So we'll just go back to more queens. Here we go. Imagine we get a killer high roll. Oh, it's purple again. With a bit of green, C plus. Oh, man. Queen is the goat. Carry it on. What else are we getting from here? Okay, it's yellow. And that's an E plus. You know, I'll even take that. I'm like, you know, I'm on a roll here. We're on a great streak. Let's see what else we pull. Ah, blue. It happens. No hard feelings. It's still an E plus. Blue again. Not great. E in total. Let's just go double check now. Where are we up to in the Soul Awakening? We've got 17 more points left to get. That should be completely doable. So let's go back to our five-star queens. We got two left. Heck, we might even do it from two if we really high roll. Let's see. Eh, it's only blue. And that's going to be an E. So that's four points right there. So we need 13 more. Let's just get an insanely good B+. Plus. I'll take that. It's yellow. Bit of purple. That's going to be a D. Okay. Alrighty then. Let's go get one more queen copy from a chest. Okay, another queen copy. What are you going to do for me? Hey, it's yellow. That's pretty fine. It's a little bit yellow. But still an E+. Plus. Ah, horrendous. And this is probably the last one now. Let's go. Open her up. It's blue again. And that's going to be an E-. minus. Oh, mate, are we like one point away? We defo are. Oh, no! That was all we needed. We, we were one point away. And that E- minus was what we wanted. Great, let's claim that then. Let's get our Divine Power Aurora Gems or whatever they're called through. Really good. And guys, I think that was a success. We got some really, really cool queen copies. If you take a look, that B plus with the A minus in speed, it's not that bad. So folks, let's go head into the Tower of Oblivion and let's get things rolling here. For this, our up heroes are Annabelle, Andrea, and Elena. Now, if I was really intelligent, I would have awakened the hero copies for those heroes so that we'd be able to use them as awakened heroes but because i'm stupid i didn't do that so we're gonna have to go and visit the auction house and we're gonna buy some copies so i've bought myself an andrea and an annabelle totally should have awakened those earlier but hey who cares so we'll add elena we'll add our andrea and then we'll do the same here with our annabelle there you go we'll save that up and then we'll go send that team into the tower so we'll save that current lineup. And we should still do okay here against the tower level 17. Depth 17. They're on Divine Power 1. I still think we'll be fine. Let's see. So we start things off. Go to 3 times speed. We've got a counter coming in there from our Alamac. He's doing alright there. Getting no stuns off. But the taunt's in there nonetheless. Which is pretty fun. Patricia doing a little poke out there. Which is good. Looking good for the whole team actually. Which is nice. Now the Seers are attacking. Okay, getting some unfortunate blows on our team. Not to worry, not to worry. Okay, here we are. When's it our turn to attack? It's round two. So there we go. Poke out there. Active skill coming from Natalie. Active skill from Alamac. They're looking weak. We should get our counterattacks now from our Patricia. There you go. She's poking them every time they hit us. Really good. Doing a lot of damage there. And when she gets an active skill, she's going to absolutely shred them. Bang! They're dead. That's really good. And look at that, folks. A ton of damage. All right, let's skip through these, see how far we can go. So this Morax wave, that's going to be defeated. This wave here, which is Amavor, he's dead. This one with four carries might be a bit of a problem, but nope, it's still a victory for us. We got Gustins, he's probably going to mock us around. Nope, we still win. Six Taras at Divine Level 1, doesn't matter. 
this whole mixed up team bit of a ranger meme team there they're all dead four eloises you're gone Next up, we got Homeshung Amon Ra. This might be a problem. Yes, this is a big problem. We'll try that one again. Yeah, there you go. Just needed a double tap. Not a problem. We got Fiona. We got Horace and then Ignis. They're dead. We got Drake, Russell. Great combo. Really powerful. The Dazzle might muck us. Actually, no, the Dazzle won't muck us up because our lowest HP ain't that good. Easy win here against those mages. I'm surprised there was a Sherlock in there, but there was only one, so it wasn't too much of a problem. And we got level 14 here, which is Carrie, Azrael, Onkiramaru, a revival team there. And we got Gustins with Forkus. It's still a win. Let's go to Nightmare 5 now. Let's throw in here and see how we do with our lineup. So we hit battle. Let's preset lineup it up, send in the tower team, and see how these guys do against this. Here we go. So we're beginning with just a few pokes from the sword flashes there nothing too scary and a lot of you ask how do you handle sword flash uh, there's a few ways you can have your fastest hero be faster than your most powerful hero so that they attack the sword flash dodges and then your most powerful hero kills the sword flash because sword flash has wasted her dodge and the other strat is just have counter-attack heroes like we do so that whenever sword flash hits you she gets punished or just control her just put some crowd control out she'll never gain a dodge if she never attacks and that's also completely fine so yeah, lots of ways to win. You just got to know the strategies, man. You just got to know the strats. Uh, Natalia hitting for huge damage there. Alamac poking through those. Gustin's putting their pings out. Alamac's not looking too happy about that. His health's in the bin. But that's just the problem with Gustin's true damage. It's never nice. Uh, that said, though, we're in a situation where one good active skill from anybody is going to wipe that back line. So I'm looking. No one's got energy yet. But the nice thing about Patricia is her attacks are good regardless. So... She will be able to put up a lot of damage pressure. She's got an active skill in the tank. I think it's going to do amazingly. And eventually, well, she tries. Swordflash dodges her. But no, that just means Natalia can come in there and clean up. Nicely done. Let's go. Nightmare level four now. Let's have a look at this one. We got ourselves a lot of crowd control nonsense going on here. But we should still be completely fine. Because we got a lot of CC immunity from this Patricia. So hopefully it's good enough. We'll have to see. Also, I highly doubt they're wearing demon bells and have continuous energy feed, so it's not going to be too bad. Oh, that said, though, a dove coming out here could be a problem. And also, Sherlock's, they can dub us regardless, which is a problem. Basic attacks, active skill, doesn't really matter. The doves are an issue. Either way, should be fine. Oh, dear. Waiting for it. A few pokes coming out. Not bad. Great stuns there from Patricia. Really good. All right. The nice thing is her pokes go past Amon Ra's shields as well. Natalia putting out good damage. All right. Ayla Max dead. So now we're in a situation where it's all on Patricia's poke damage. She's doing fantastic here. Keeping the pressure up the opponents. Then she triggers, nuking the opposing wave. Oh, now she's crowd controlled. She breaks free. That's good. She's got her pokes coming out here. She's got an active skill ready to go. And she gets a stun on the Sherlock. Sherlock reflects it. It doesn't hit us. That's fine. We're now doved. We break free from the dove. We're now controlled. We break free from that. She's now got a full active skill. Here she goes. Hits them out. They break free from the crowd control. She smacks again. And they're dead. Huge damage. Well done, Patricia. Okay, Nightmare 3. Let's go. Demon Outburst. Let's remove that. And let's swing him for another fight here. Use our preset lineup. It's our tower team. Let's go again. So again, that Asmodel going to swing out. We've got a counter-attack coming here from our guys. Not too shabby. The taunts there on the opponents, it's good to see. But unfortunately, we don't really have any stuns. Alamac didn't get that off. But that's mainly Patricia's job anyway. So a few better pokes out there. Stun landing on Asmodel in slot 2. Patricia, absolutely fantastic. Looking good there. Okay, he's managed to remove it with his Purify. That's a little bit of a pain. Either way, still good. Okay, Tara sealing Alamac there. That's not so nice. That could be an issue for us. Uh, Patricia putting a bit of burst damage out there. There you go. Killing Alamac there. Nicely done. Killing the Asmodel there in slot one. Poke damage coming out there on slot two. Very nice. You can see Patricia's poke putting up a lot of pressure on these opponents. Their HP is really low. And there you go. Active skills from everybody cleans it up. That's what's nice about Patricia. That poke pressure really puts the opponents in the death range for everybody else. We've got Nightmare 1 here. Let's go swing against this. We have to beat these guys by round six. Okay, let's put our tower team in here for another swing. Let's go. Let's try this out. Okay, they're going to swing against us. Alamac hitting that Eos. Pretty nasty looking team here, to be fair. Azrael 
is not nice. And neither is the Home Jung. Although he stunned the Home Jung with Aelomach. That is fantastic. Very nicely done there. And a stun there on Mockman. Really, really good. Aelomach putting in hard work there. Now, we do unfortunately have Horrify on our lineup, which is going to slow us down a little bit. Lord of Fear has been a giant poo head. Not going to be very nice to us. Stun there on Eos is pretty solid. We need to see a lovely bit of active skill coming out, but no, we're doved. This is grim. When you need to win by round six, getting turned into a dove is not fun. Not to mention the fact that Aspen is going to slow you down as well with his Horrify. We just need a huge amount of burst to come here. Patricia does have an active skill in the tank. Let's hope it's going to be a good one. She hasn't been controlled yet, so it all comes down to this. We want to see it. There it goes. Now she's charged up. That means she will be doing counters, putting pressure on the opponents every time someone gets hit, which is excellent. There you go. Now she's getting those pokes in. It is round four. I'm worried we're not going to kill this. I'm really worried we're not going to kill this. We are getting that poke damage in through, which does mean our attacks, they are going to charge up. We are going to get some really good hits off eventually. Just got to keep that damage pressure nice and high. You can see their health's pretty equally low here, which is really, really good. There comes a few hits. There's the stuns. They are low now. This is good. Okay, we've got to wait for the huge active skill from Alamac and from Natalia. We're almost there. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Alamac, big active, big active. There we go. Patricia gets a huge active. Nan does Natalie. And that means, come on, Alamac, finish him up. There it is. <sighs> Woo, that was a close one, but we got there in the end. Nicely done, team. Really nice. And here we go. Nightmare 2. This one's a little harder. We are going to have to remove our Natalia from the lineup. So it's just going to be Patricia Alamac. And we'll put in our three up heroes for this. Let's send it. Oh my goodness. That was hideous. We died so fast. Oh! Bro! Okay, now this is this is going to be interesting. Because pennies have such good precision, they're not triggering the blocks, which means we're not gaining Alamax shields. So I'm going to remove Annabelle. I'm going to put Natalia in. We're going to see if the three together can do this. We are on depth 17, and we don't have an aura because we're forced to run a lower number of heroes. Oh my word, that's the problem. Penny gets the freaking crit, and everyone gets hurt here. Oh, unbelievable absolutely wild there you go great active skill from natalia but we're left now onto patricia she's taken hits she gained some shields there we go come on oh pennies reflect unbelievable oh my word try again come on freaking penny every time we struggle against anything it's always pennies reflect anyone would struggle against this wave any hero because the reflect is so rubbish right okay that's the problem that's why alamax so low right now we get our pokes out instantly murking patricia's hp alamax getting wrecked by the penny reflect again here you go the damage is good but you know the penny's gonna kill us yep it happens again stupid hero oh my goodness we need to kill those pennies before Ah, uh, wild. Come on. And he said, Blood Tie Queen Arrhenius never died to a penny. It's because Blood Tie Queen Arrhenius never done any freaking burst damage in our life. It's heroes that hit hard that get punished by penny. Let's be real. If you're dying, uh, you know, Unbending Will, it might be worth adding Unbending Will, to be fair. They are all running Balance Strike. And the reason they're all running Balance Strike was for our Star Expedition lineup. So it might be worth to put Unbending Will on these guys. That's that set, though. It's not going to save you from pennies. It's a mark. It goes straight through Unbending Will. Then again, Aelomac for the chat moment. No, no. It's also the Halora pings. We do need Unbending Will for that. So what we'll do is we will decide to put in Unbending Will. Also, it means we do less damage, actually, from our burst, so we might just somehow clutch it. So we'll put Unbending Will on our team, and hopefully that'll be pretty good. Right, now we've got Unbending Will. Let's see what happens. Stun there on the Halor. Nice. Good burst there from Natalia. Excellent. Alamax active, poking in, and then there we have to deal with pennies again. Okay, we've already killed one, which is nice. So the damage pressure is good here. Oh! The Penny Reflect again? 
Let's go. I make sure you're using the right artifact. Yeah, I think we're using um we're using demon bells on these guys. I could switch to golden crowns if we need to. It might be okay. But I do like the energy feed here. It really does help. Oh, come on, Aelabak. You're living. You're living. That's pretty good. That's pretty good so far. A lot of pings there from the Halora. Not pleasant. Oh, my goodness. There you go. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Triggering all the reflex there. And Patricia, you're going to pop? Okay, she's low with the others, but it still means the pennies are alive, which is obviously the opposite of what we want right now. Maybe we can beat them on counters? Yo, we might beat them on counters. Look at Penny! Ah! Right. Do I have Melodic on main hero? No. Uh, we're using Auspicious Lucky Cat. Uh, right, let's put crowns on. That means we have no energy feed. But it will make Natalia and Elamak considerably more tanky. Let's send it. Okay. Now that we've got Crown on Elamak and Natalia, you can see they're living a lot more, taking way less damage from the pennies, which is pretty good already to see. There you go, Natalia getting some burst off, immediately getting wrecked by the Reflect, though, so it's the same kind of situation where Reflect is going to kill us either way, which is very annoying. It's just because Penny is such a rubbish hero, reflecting that damage as a mark as well, which is really irritating. However, I think Elamak might be able to burn through it, there you go, he's coming out. Didn't die as well, this is good. Counters from Patricia looking fantastic right now. Patricia killing, but Alamac lives! Let's go! The crowd, Alamac holding in, and that's all we needed. Fantastic. There you go, folks, that is depth 17. Cleared and beaten. Let's claim our rewards and get ready for depth 18 next time. Alrighty, folks, on our next of things to do, we're going to finish today by showing you some Star Expedition. Let's get this tuned up properly for that. So we're running Balance Strike on everybody to maximize our damage output. And what I've noticed with Patricia, she's inconsistent. Numbers are a little bit wonky, but that's standard for Star Expedition. It's normal. However, we do want to be running Demon Bells, as these will allow us to have energy feed for the team to some degree, which is pretty nice. And we're also running a few additional artifacts. So what we have is we have Heart Watcher, who is using an elusive mirror that's going to feed additional energy. We've got an Ignis, she's got a Lucky Candy Bar, and we've got ourselves an Olivia, also with Lucky Candy Bar. So let's go put this team to the test. We're going to go in and I'm going to show you how this works. First things first, we just go to the Silent Realm. We go to Purify, and we hit the Smash button. We're going to filter for Cos, Persuasion, Tranquility, whatever we need. We'll put that in, smash a few times, and we'll get some nice things. I highly doubt they're better than what we've already got. These are already pretty high, you can see. Apart from that one there, Cos Foresight. So let's go check. Do we have a better Cos Foresight in here now that gives some pretty hefty bonuses? That's, that's quite nice. We'll take that one. It's a little bit better than what we already have. Okay, so looking at this now. We have 28% left on the boss. We're X111, and we've already been doing pretty good. So let's go put out some attacks. Let me show you how this team has performed. So we're using Natalia's core for the bit of bonuses there that that gives. And yeah, let's just go swing in and see how we go. So I haven't tried against X111. I don't know if this is going to do too much damage to us. I haven't tested. This is going to be purely our first time in against this. And we're just going to see. Now, what you'll notice immediately is the damage is nowhere as high as some heroes you will probably have seen in the past, as we do not have Mystic Fairy Freya or Halora to buff us up. However, what we do have is some decent survival coming through here. Full heal coming onto that Heart Watcher there. Heart Watcher's still alive. This is great to see, as that's going to give us Watcher Marks, which are what is going to be consistent or inconsistent here. The more Watcher Marks we get, the better our damage output. We've got Olivia here to keep the opponent shrunk. And the big problem with Heart Watcher is she is only wearing an elusive mirror, so sometimes she doesn't manage to cut through, which is a little unfortunate. But the Lucky Candy Bar Ignis and the Lucky Candy Bar Olivia should still be getting attacks, assuming they've been fed the right amount of energy, which is good for the team. Now... We do probably want to speed up this Aelamak to make him faster. And also the Natalia to make her faster. At least make one of them faster than Patricia. That's the only inconsistent thing here, is the amount of energy we're getting onto Patricia. However, there's another thing we need to bear in mind, which is... You'll notice Patricia 
One thing which is unfortunate about her is she only counterattacks once when the boss attacks. Even though the boss hits your entire team, she doesn't get a counterattack for every person hit. She only gets the individual counter, which makes her considerably worse than she could have been if they coded it the other way, that if it's every time someone on your team gets hit, you counterattack for each person hit. But unfortunately, that's not the case. She only counterattacks once. It's just, did anyone get hit? Yes, okay, send out a counter. So she doesn't do as much damage as I'd like here, but she still does pretty decent damage. And when balance strike triggers, she gets some good stuff. And of course, she's a giant killer hero, which always helps. And she does have a lot of armor ignoring damage, which is really nice. So if she gets a crit through, that can help. Um, and if she doesn't get a crit through, you obviously get balance strike. But I probably want to improve her crit rate, actually. here. I might even want to switch to crit crit attack. You never know. There could be a lot of different ways to build her. But we'll just have to see. We're doing okay here, though, which is nice. Our active skill poking through there. Not getting as much damage as I'd like. But still, I would love it if we're in the E to the 14 there. That's going to be pretty good, considering that we won't have uh, Freya or Halora giving us additional bonuses. We're not using Antlers Kane, we're using Auspicious Lucky Cat. So, hoping for big numbers. Okay, the Shrink's worn off. Olivia not getting that through. So let's see if we can keep this damage pressure up. Olivia's dead. Oh no, this is getting pretty bad towards the end. That said, though, we might still be fine. I don't think we're going to lose the team too badly here. Although the lack of shrink in the final few rounds is unfortunate. Uh, but we should still be okay here. Got good shields on the team. Heartwatcher still holding in there. Active skill from Patricia there. You saw the boss's health bar move pretty substantially. And uh, there you go. Not too terrible. And uh, the final hit. There you go. Now, that was pretty bad. That wasn't great. That was pretty low 39 trillion that was a pretty rough run so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try and see if we can tune this up better let's see if we can get one of our heroes to be faster than patricia now that's gonna be really hard considering that patricia is in a home and we don't quite yet have maxed armor on our heroes but there might be a way so let's see can we get a speed stone yes we can speed heal effect on doppelganger natalia that takes it to 2274 which is good but not fast that's still pretty slow i wonder if i can upgrade her armor as well let's go into the blacksmith let's go to grados blessing resonance suits now we should be able to take some of this up not there we can't but what about in this one yeah we can there you go so we'll stick in natalia's armor here that should hopefully buff up her speed pretty substantially so we'll take this one up a level we'll forge that in there you go and i wonder can we get another level out of this too if we can that's pretty fantastic we, we can okay cool so put that in there and again and again and this is gonna get a very expensive but still we'll do it and there you go it's three star armor which we can put on natalia so we'll drop that in we'll give her the demon bell again and let's see where that puts her speed at. She's at 2304. So actually, we can slow down the Patricia by taking her shoes off. That puts her at 2347. And now if we just put the imprints in onto Natalia. Oh my word, are we going to be like a tiny bit of speed off? I think we are. 2344 as opposed to 2347. Right. So, you know how we slow her down? We remove the skin. So what I do is I remove this. We lose 10% holy damage, but we do slow her down enough that Natalia is going to be quicker. Now, the question is, does Natalia's skin give speed? It doesn't. Dang it, if only they did. Wow. And soul power for three speed on DGN. That's also a pretty solid option. We could do that too. Actually, that's a really good option. That means I don't have to lose the skin on Patricia. So in that case, we'll put the skin back onto Patricia. And what is that? It's a three speed difference. So yeah, we can, we can definitely achieve that. So we go to the Soul Temple. We'll go to the Soul Gathering Statue. Let's destroy our seas. We have a lot of seas to destroy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. We'll disassemble all of those. That's a heck of a lot of points. And there you go. Let's go to the soul stuff and let's add it then to Natalia. So what we'll do, we need three speed here. So we'll put these points in. There you go. Plus 50 confirm. Nice. That's pretty good. Okay. Now, what if we can evenly distribute the rest? So we'll go with 
another two speed here. So we'll get to 40. And then we'll add two more speed to Natalia. Yep, seems good. So let's get another bit of speed in there too. Six. Now let's go to seven. Oh, we can't. Right, okay. So we'll just go to plus six there. Confirm. And then we'll put the rest into Patricia. So Natalia should be faster now. Two, three, fifty. Two, three, four, nine. Perfect. So let's try this one more time. And now we know that Natalia is going to be quicker. That's really good. And it means we don't have to put her ahead of Patricia in the lineup either, which is also really nice. So let's go see how this plays out. So Natalia goes first. Good stuff. And then Ailamac does his active and we should get pretty decent energy feed here now, hopefully. So let's get watching. Perfect, Patricia doing an active. All right, the energy there from Ignis. That's good. There we go. That little bit of energy feeding into Patricia there. Perfect. Now we should be getting plenty more active skills on Patricia here too, which is good. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Really, really, really nice. Because the thing is, the boss is stealing energy from Patricia because she's the highest attack. So the Natalie is just toppling that up. You'll see she always finishes with a little less energy there. But now she's doing an active skill every single time, which is massively improving our damage output here. This is perfect. Okay. And at what point is it worth going for a holy damage, skill damage stone on Patricia? Uh, when you have so much attack that going for attack attack holy damage isn't worth it, and you already have enough crit damage that you don't need crit crit attack. That is when holy damage, skill damage is the better choice. Okay, perfect. Right, I'm a little bit worried about how low Natalie is there. Oh no, she's still fine. Still feeding that energy. Yeah, we've had an active skill every time here, which is really, really good. Definitely helping with the performance of the team. Perfect. Okay, there's Phoenix. Active skill to another active skill. Bit of damage coming up there. Very nice. And yeah, we're losing a huge amount of damage that the pet would be giving us as well because we don't have heroes that can put out reliable damage over time to the opponent. So if we had Freya or Holora here giving bleed or um, or poison, we could definitely capitalize on that too. So I think another hero I really want to build on this team is going to be a Freya. She's probably going to be our next Transcendence hero, as Freya will substantially improve our damage here in Star Expedition. Definitely. And um, I think the general conclusion you should make of Patricia in Star Expedition is she is definitely not the best choice. There are still better better heroes to pick. Uh, I would lean towards uh, Lord of Fear Aspen if you want to maximize damage. He's still very much the go-to. Or if you wanted something a little different, you can go with an A-tier Vulcan. There are definitely teams and strategies out there that do capitalize on Vulcan's damage output in Star Expedition and still do very, very well. And um, and yeah, you still then get to have the fun of having an A-tier Vulcan. In fact, you can have a B-plus Vulcan and it's still completely fine. Um, and yeah, Patricia's been completely fun. Completely fun. Um, that said, though, I'll give you a better verdict once I have Mystic Fairy Freya and Halora on the account. But for now, I'm definitely still leaning towards Aspen as the favorite pick. And that was a little bit better damage there. We did pretty, pretty good. Uh, still a pretty fair low roll, actually, because uh, I know there have been fights in the past where I have easily achieved 1.5 E to the 14. Um, that is not an over-exaggeration. That is definitely something I've managed to do. Hopefully, we can do that if we just skip another couple times. We'll get something good here. Oh, that was really, really bad. I'm guessing... Yeah, and we must have lost the Olivia in the Heart Watcher early there. That was really, really unlucky. And we got two more attempts. Maybe we can get an E to the 14 here. Let's see it. Fingers crossed for Patricia. Actually, we've got, we got four more fights left. It is the final day. So we will be able to put all our fights in. There you go. Look at that. Crazy. Crazy how you can get the same hero, but just completely pop off. Wild, really, isn't it? Yeah, so there's um, E to the 14. Really nice. And yeah, if we had Atlas Kane as well, that could be another artifact that would be really helping. Um, there you go, that's 94 trillion from that one. So we're getting some good hits, we get some bad hits. Um, so yeah, she's inconsistent. But I think all strategies in Star Expedition have some degree of inconsistency. It really depends on the control that your team is taking. And also, what ways you have of mitigating that. Uh, there you go, that's a 1.1 E to the 14 there. Very nice. And uh, yeah, that's it for our hits. So Patricia's been okay. 
She's not been amazing. It's definitely put me up there. I'm in the top three of this guild. We're not an amazing guild. It's just a guild made up of small whales. Uh, if you take a look here, you know, Artoria, one of our heavier hitters, he's running a B tier Aspen. So you do get better damage from a B tier Aspen, but that shouldn't be a surprise as this guy also has Halora and Freya. So he's able to run very, very solid strategies for this account. He's got Heartwatcher, he's got Olivia. So he's running a proper lineup with much better damage ramp up because he's got the Freya and the Halora. So that's no surprise to me that he's able to beat my damage in Star Expedition because he's got much better performance. And what's his damage? It's higher than mine. His point score in total, uh, if you take a look. Yeah, so he's, he's managed to do uh 50 again of what i've managed so he's probably getting like two e to the 14 pretty consistently that would be my guess and yort black i'm guessing he's also rocking an aspen aspen's very 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 good if i wanted to really double down on star expedition uh, i'd probably first do some research into how freya and holora affect our damage output and if i wasn't happy i'd then look into bringing in some additional heroes for damage. Now, one thing that's really nice about Patricia, and I think is something you might want to consider if you were planning on building her yourself, Patricia, if you have a big enough train, can take the spot in tenant spot two because Alamac will function as a tenant for your Patricia. That opens up the option to add Lord of Fear Aspen onto your account because you can go Lord of Fear Aspen with Elena and Halora. That way you get in two really good support heroes and Lord of Fear Aspen to be another damage dealer. So what you would run is Lord of Fear Aspen as your main damage dealer and Patricia as your secondary who can also offer crowd control support. So instead of going with someone like Betty to give crowd control, you choose Patricia because she can stun. You've got Alamac for the stun and hopefully that can work pretty well to already accentuate the control that Aspen puts out because Aspen is able to horrify opponents as well. So it could be like a really interesting strat for people who have much bigger trains and want to run multiple damage dealers on their account and also lean towards a Patricia style of play without losing out on optimal performance. Now, if I had six Transcendence Heroes, I feel like that would be definitely the way for me to go, because then I could enjoy Lord of Fear Aspen. I can enjoy Elena Divine Power to make that Aspen stronger, but then I also get to enjoy Natalia Divine Power and Patricia Divine Power, and that could be a really good combination of Divine Power heroes. But unfortunately, I do not have a lineup of six heroes, so I can't do that, but I definitely think that could be a strong strategy for those of you with established trains and with at least six or seven Transcendence Heroes. I think Seven is the sweet spot because you can bring Freya in as well. And then you have full versatility on your account because you've got Freya, Halora, Elamac, and you've got Natalia. But then you've also got um, Aspen and then Patricia for damage, whilst also having all pretty much bases covered. So that would be pretty pretty good now you said speaking of divine power are we getting destiny hha today no i don't want to do that i don't want to put destiny onto our alamac uh, i really i could I, I could if i wanted to i mean we could put a ton of destiny onto our heroes uh i i, I could make that an option uh, i would just have to go and max out this event and then pick up all those cores of origin and i could just finish off the cores for both natalia and alamac they're both on a two level core right now so i could easily do that I'm just questioning whether it's something I want to be doing for two reasons. First of all, it's the Stellar Shard investment to go from level 100 to level 120 would sap me out of Stellar Shards, so I wouldn't be able to actually capitalize. Although, for maxing this event, we are going to get a ton of Stellar Shards. So actually, if you do want to see me consider and probably do put Divine Power onto the Alamac and Natalia, hit that subscribe button, as that's probably what we're going to do next time once we've got ourselves all our Mithril pickaxes and used our Wishing Coins to maximize this event, as there are a lot of Stellar Shards available plenty other ways i can pick them up this week and we will be getting cause of origin to finish this off so if that's something you want to see hit that subscribe button i will see you next time thank you for tuning in and of course guys have an amazing week good luck with your awakens and of course happy island